Hi, and welcome to Top Solid 7. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can control our tool change positions. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to start by simulating these tool paths. First operation we're facing right there. Next operation, we're going to face one of the next old bosses, we'll call them. And you can see in between, it's going back to a safe position for the rotations. Nothing wrong with that. But maybe we want to speed up production. Okay, maybe the tool change can happen right over the part. So here, on every single operation, you're seeing the tool does its job, and then it retracts to that safe position. And we send the table home just to return back to continue machining. Okay. Let's see if we can make that a little more efficient. The way this is managed is not by requesting a post-processor change. In fact, at Top Solid, we believe that you as the programmer should always be in control of what's happening on the machine. That's why we have link movement editors. With the link movement editor, you also have control over the tool change position. Here's how it works. We're gonna to go to the equipment tab. We're gonna to go to the tool change positions option. Here you're going to see there's one tool holder, the spindle, that's this thing right there. One part holder, the table, that's this thing right here. If you're working on a mill turn machine with multiple turrets, for example, multiple spindles, you want to make sure that you are configuring the correct tool holder and the correct part holder combination. Next, I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus sign here to add a value, and I'm going to call this Z only. And what I'm going to do is quite simple. I'm going to delete the values out of the fields that I do not want to print any value for in the post processor. So by leaving these empty, that makes them void of data, which means that no motion will be commanded for those axes. Now, if this is what you always want in your template, for example, you could do that, and then every back to tool change position will only ever use this. Okay? But for now, I just want to add it because I want to show you how you can control this. Next, I'm going to go to the second facing because, again, this is the same tool, multiple operations. And I'm going to go to my link movements. I'm going to edit my retract. And if we look at the retract, this is just going Z, X, Y, A, C, right? Uh, to make this modification, by the way, you have to be in manual mode. And what I'm going to do is go to the end position, and there you're going to see the Z only. If I select that, it doesn't matter what other lines I have here. You can see these are no longer being commanded. I green check. Now, if I do that for each of these, so I'm going to go to link movement, edit retract, go to the end position, Z only, link movement, edit retract, End position, Z only. Again, link movement, edit retract. End position, Z only. I'm going to hit a rebuild just for fun. That's Control R on the keyboard. And now if we watch the simulation, it'll be a bit more efficient. So again, we come down, we do our facing. Z retracts. I'm going to pause for a second. The reason Z retracted there and went to the safe position is because that was the inner operational move. Okay. We we're only modifying the end of tool. So now, last use of the tool. Notice tool change happened. We're now on our tip drill. We kept the same angular solution. Tool change happens. We're now on our drill kept the same angular solution. Tapping is now happening and now we're sending it and we're done. So again this is just a simple sample to show you how you can control your tool change positions in Top Solid. Thanks for watching.